when God created Adam, Adam represented God sowing a seed. The first Adam was a seed that God had sowed. When that seed sinned, it was Satan's attempt to affect God's seed, to stop God's seed from bearing a harvest. Because because Adam was a seed, that means that he had a harvest that he was going to bring to God as a seed. While his seed, God's seed, is being sown into the earth and it's traveling back to him to give him a harvest, it gets interrupted by Satan. Satan interrupts God's seed so that it couldn't bring God a harvest. Hereby, you understand what happens in the spirit realm when you sow seed, that when you sow a seed, Satan is attempting to see if he can stop that seed from coming back to you and bringing you a harvest. The reason why God gets angry at Adam, because Adam is supposed to be bringing a harvest back to God. And. Because of satanic interference, the harvest never gets to God. So you got to understand in John 3, 16, when it said God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, God sold again. This is what you have to understand about having strong sowing hands, being a mighty sower, because God sold the first Adam, the first Adam seed it's like it doesn't bring God the harvest that he wants. He sows again as and the second Adam is the seed and the seed brings to God all that he wants and more. The seed does exceedingly abundantly above all that God could ask, think or imagine. He sows the second seed and the seed is carrying his wealth, is carrying his dreams, is carrying his intentions, is, in, is carrying his wishes, his fantasies. God wants a lot of women and a lot of men that he could abide his spirit inside of. And this second seed makes that dream come true in an overflowing measure. God wants prophets and apostles and teachers and pastors and evangelists and virtuous women and kings and priests. And he sows the second seed and it comes to pass. God himself had to persevere with his sowing so that his sowing could bring the conditions that he saw in his mind. My God. So when you're sowing a seed, you must always remember that the seed is a weapon that you're throwing at Goliath. And it doesn't matter how big the Goliath is. The Goliath going to drop and fall. And before you know it, you're going to have the head of the Goliath and you're going to walk around Jerusalem with the head of Goliath. And there's going to be an open pathway for you to enter your promise. Your soul has to learn to become a sower. Your spirit is already a sower because your spirit is of God. Your spirit is God. And your soul has to learn how to sow because your soul is the place that it, it receives reports. It receives conditions. That's why in Ecclesiastes verse 11, I think it said that he that looks at the winds will not sow. And he that regards the clouds will not reap. Because your soul is your mind, is your will. And your mind often thinks about things that are natural. That's why God could not do many miracles in that place, because their mind was in doubt and unbelief. They stopped his ability. He asks the man, will that be made whole? Because he wants the man to know if. You're in the right place mentally for my ability to come upon you. If the man says no, King Jesus will withhold his ability and keep on walking, even though he has the man's miracle. Which shows you that the Lord is responding to your actions. Make sure that when you're waiting for God, that you're not waiting for God for something that he's waiting for you to activate. The seed is activation power concerning everything that belongs to you. 
When you're sowing, favor will find you even if you can't identify if someone sees your seed. God sees the seed. The seed sower is communicating with God telepathically. That's why he said he loves a cheerful giver. How does he know that you're cheerful? Nobody can know whether or not you're cheerful. That's an inward man quality. That's a mentality. So when it said God loves a cheerful giver, it's saying that God telepathically checks where you're at in your sowing to see what type of spirit attitude you're carrying. And he loves it when your telepathic communication is on point. My God in here. My God in here, my God in here. So imagine when people are not sowing, there's no telepathic communication of honor between them and God. So how does God ever feel close to anyone that doesn't sow? Think about it. If someone says, hey, I'm a prophet and they're not even a big sower, they're a liar. Because telepathically, us as prophets, we love God so much. We love the father so much that telepathically we will communicate honor at any given moment. Moses was a sower. Elijah was a sower. Abraham was a sower. In the Bible, prophets were the major sowers. Malachi was a sower. That's why he's telling the people you're robbing God because he's not robbing God. God would not send him with a message if he was in the mess that the message was talking about. <laughs> Did you just catch what I said? God would not have sent Malachi with the message if he was in the mess that the message was talking about. It's called hypocrisy. So Malachi is teaching them how to sow because Malachi has dominated with the seed. Malachi knows about the windows because he's been there. He's living out of there. He knows that God will pour you out a blessing that he, you don't have room enough to receive because he's walking in it. When you are a seed sower, you're telepathically communicating with God. Some people are telling God, I love you, I love you, I love you. But when God checks the telepathic communication, he sees no love. Because love gives. So that's why you meet people a lot of times that say that they've been serving God for 50 years and they never own a home. You lying, you's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> they tell you that they love the Lord with all their heart since they was a little baby and they're like 90,000 years old. Use a liar, use a liar, use a liar, use a big one. Use a big one. There's small lies, there's, there's many size lies, there's lies look like Steve Curry size, there's lies look like Cisco size, there's lies that look like Shaq size, Lamar Odom size, there's different lies, different sizes. You can't say that you fear God and your telepathic communication is off. When you fear God, you'll think about sowing into him because telepathically your mind will exhibit that fear. How you think. See, sowing, it speaks a lot about a person because it shows that telepathically their inward man is saying what their outward man is declaring. Did you just catch what I said? When you're sowing, it says a lot because that means that your inward man is actually on point with your outward man. Your outward man is saying, I honor God, but your inward man is thinking honor. Remember what King Jesus said, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. What King Jesus is saying, when you say that you honor me, I telepathically check what you're thinking about. There's nothing that you're thinking about that is of honor because honor means that you want to invest in me. How are you not investing your time? How are you not investing your praise? How are you not investing your money? And telepathically, you're doing nothing that your mouth says that you do. This is why when a person is sowing seed, God makes them rich. He makes them wealthy. He makes them prosperous because telepathically they're proving that they have mastered how to let God govern them with much. So he has to give them much. You can't tell me that I sold my way out. Started from the bottom. Now I'm here. I sold clothes. I got more clothes than any businessman that you know. If you pit my closet next to President Donald Trump. I have more clothes than President Donald Trump. I have more suits than President Donald Trump. 
Ooh, that felt good saying, President Trump, may you win. May you win, sir. May you win, sir. We don't want to see Joe Biden. We don't want to see Kamala Harris. We don't want to see none, none of that. We don't want to see a camel. We don't want to see, we don't want to see Wolf Blitzer, brother. We don't want to see none of that. I sold clothes and got a multiplication of clothes. I know some of y'all going to look on your phone of who Wolf, Wolf Blitzer is. <laughs> I sold clothes and got a multiplication of clothes. The harvest is God rewarding you for consistency. Always remember that if you're taking notes. The harvest is God rewarding you for consistency. A seed is a letter of need for God to take care of you. A seed is a letter of need for God to take care of you. You don't sow out of need because the Bible say don't sow of necessity. That means you should never sow out of need. The need mentality has to be broken so that it doesn't corrupt your seed sowing. You don't sow out of need. You sow out of Dominion, out of blessing, out of wealth, out of riches. You're releasing who you really are through your sowing. See, some people sow for wealth transference and some people sow out of wealth transference. Who do you think get the wealth transference? The person that's sowing out of it. Because once you realize that the seed is you loosing from heaven to earth, the harvest is guaranteed. See, most times you think that your seed is you sowing to heaven, but your seed is you sowing from heaven. You're sowing out of money cometh, not sowing for money cometh. When you sow for money cometh, it becomes the law. But when you sow out of money cometh, it's grace. This hot, man. This hot. This hot. This hot, boy. This a hot, boys. 504, boys. What? When you sow for miracles, it becomes law. When you sow out of the miracle anointing, it is grace. When you sow for, you start stepping into flesh. But when you sow out, you're stepping into spirit. So the seed is you just stepping out of your heavenly atmosphere and creating it on earth. See, the seed is not just ascension. The seed is descending. Because you're taking an elevator down from the top and bringing down what's in the top to the bottom. I want to say this, that the seed activates cherubims. Cherubims come to bless you. They come to protect the blessing. They come to increase you. They come to make sure that your garden is set for you so that wherever you are, you can enjoy God being your caretaker, your provider, your Jehovah Jireh, the place where your provision multiplies. The seed is a location. It is a geography. Your seed is not just an object. It is a place. So when you sow a seed, there is a paradise that you're activating on earth. It is a place. Your seed is a place. That's why your seed activates placement. God will place you where your functionality is. God will place you where your anointing is, your assignment is. That's why the seed will always bring you to the area that you was created to be from the foundation of the world. Sowing creates the right relationships that bring the benefits of God into manifestation in your life. That's why your seed will sanctify you until God can find somebody that's not going to be jealous of your wealth. God can find somebody that's not going to compete with your increase. They're not going to try to overshadow your testimony. The seed telepathically communicates with King Jesus that you're ready to live like him on earth. The streets of gold is not just a pavement in heaven. But it is a place that you can walk into while you're still on earth. Hallelujah. This is deep stuff here. This deep stuff here.
this deep stuff here. When King Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions, you can step into that in my father's house anointing while you're sowing. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. While you're honoring God in this body here on earth, you could step into that in my father's house anointing. Why do you think that King Jesus started talking to Peter and talking to the disciples that in my father's house are many mansions? Why is he telling them about something that they can't access? No, everything that King Jesus speaks is accessible to you. He's throwing out this secret because he's telling them this is a realm, this is a dimension that if you listen to me and let not your heart be troubled I'll let your heart be doubled all through the seed all through the seed a harvest is God rewarding a diligent sower people that have diligent hands to sow will never be aborted or never will abort their harvest because the harvest it it is an overpowering fire of God moving in the spirit realm to bring events, bring provisions that you're supposed to be enjoying because you belong to the Lord. When the spirit takes you over to sow, you have to be careful that you yield to it. Many people don't yield to the sowing anointing. That's why you get their money. That's why you get their favor. That's why you get their pleasure. There are people that got pleasure scheduled for them and they'll never get it because it's in the seed. It's not in their prayer. It's not in them going to church. It's not in them reading the Bible. How many people you know read the Bible ain't got no house? They ain't got no car. They ain't got no money. Because that's not the law for this, for this domination life. That's not the law. You got to sow some seed. You got to become serious about what God puts in your hand. And God be testing people all the time. God put a little bit. He put a little Mickey Mouse money in your hand and you want to grab onto it. That five hundred dollars can't build the life that God trying to give to you. That two hundred dollars can't build the life that God trying to give unto you. Stop holding on to everything that get into your hand like it's your last money. God could hear you talking to him and you saying, oh, I got to hold on to this because I don't know when this going to happen again. Or oh, I finally got a break. I don't know if this ever going to take place for me again. I don't know if this ever going to happen to me again. I got to make sure I hold on to this because this is the first time in a long time that I got this. You, you slow, baby. You slow, baby. Because us that's sowing, we going from glory to glory financially we getting God's trust upon us in greater measures and he keep on dropping the bag in higher dimensions stop holding on to money as if that's your last money God telepathically can hear your communication that's not trusting God that's not faith when you are realizing that the just shall live by faith you will realize that God put stuff in your hands on purpose to see what you're going to do You know how I know this? Because there's many people that I've met and God told me, he said, son, I want you to give them this large amount of money. Then he said, nope, don't give them nothing. I like, oh, Jesus. He said, as a matter of fact, you go enjoy the money yourself. You go buy yourself, son. That's how I understand the law about harvest. I understand the law about your blessing going to somebody else. Because it's in the seed. There have been people before God says, son, I want you I want you to bless them with this amount of money. And then God says, as a matter of fact, I changed my mind. Don't bless them with nothing. Because telepathically, I don't see that they respect me for me to reward them and give them the increase. And then there's other people that God tells me, I want you to give them amount and I can do it. Because they listen to the spirit. They don't listen to their flesh. When you listen to your flesh, you miss mantles. You miss the anointing. You miss finances. There are many women right now that's supposed to be richer than they are, but they've been stupid all their life. They've been dumb. There's a lot of men that's supposed to be richer than they are right now, but they've been so prophetic that they miss God. They've been so apostolic that they didn't. it. They did it. They were so prophetic. They knew God's voice so much that they missed God's voice. <laughs> Saints, money is not tied into what you need. 
Money is not tied into your bills, it's not tied into your problems. God only gives money by how you make him feel. I wish I could push this down your throat. God does not give you wealth because you prayed for it or you think that you lived long enough to have it or you done been through enough storms. God doesn't care that you've been through heartache and pain and issues. That's not going to be the defining factor. Oh, I've been through sickness. I've been through all this stuff. I overcame. Now it's time for me to enjoy life. No, it's not time for you to enjoy life. The only time you're going to enjoy life until the only time you're going to actually enjoy life is when God can enjoy you. That's the only time. God needs to enjoy you first before he can birth your enjoyment. Don't be somebody that's supposed to be way ahead of your time but you live your whole life according to the flesh because the f you, you will know if you lived according to your flesh because saints, let me tell you something. If you hit 25 years old, 26 years old and you ain't got no money and see some of y'all older than that. That's why you got to be in a place where you stop leaning to your own understanding. Stop being that person that need to know all the details because you got to understand that your telepathic communication towards God been messing you up all your life. You got to catch the memo and realize, hey, I'm about 40. I'm about 50. Hey, I'm about 30 years old. I better get this right mentally, because if I was doing something right, I would have had more money than I have now. So I need to sit myself down and stop being somebody that always need to make all the decisions. I need to find out what is God doing decision? What is the spirit saying? What is the prophet saying? What is the will of God for me? You got to get into that place where you start saying, I should have had more than I have right now. I've met preachers before told me, how do, how do you do it? I've met preachers that told me I go from conference to conference and I don't got as much money as you. How do you do it? That's the secret. I'm not doing it. <laughs> You doing it. That's why it's not working. You going from conference to conference. You preaching and preaching and preaching. I'm staying in my zone. I'm staying in my bubble. That's the problem. I'm not going to Bishop Willie Earl Church. You're not going to find Prophet Joshua Holmes doing an interview. I stay in my bubble. My bubble is carrying all the glory I need to produce, to reproduce, to multiply, to increase. When you're sowing seed, God will give you favor even if no one recognizes your seed. The powerful thing about the seed is that when I sow money, God will see that I sowed money in the right spirit and he will bring events to me even though I never voiced it to nobody that I sold. The seed is like a secret communication between you and the father. And when he sees it, he knows that you're ready to enjoy life. Sowing is you texting God of your readiness to enjoy your path. When you sow seed, you're telling God that I'm ready for money to overflow in my life. I'm ready for money to be overwhelmingly increased. The seed is a multiplier of the money that you possess on earth. You don't get money because you're in knees, because you have problems, because you have lack, because you have a tax. You get money because you're a seed sower. Remember the Bible said in Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet said he'll give you double for your shame. Well, how does God give you double for your shame? He giving you double for your shame because it was a shame that you was robbing him. <laughs> He's giving you double because you stopped robbing him. So now you're not shaming God and you're not doing shameful decisions and you're not experiencing shameful things happening to you because of those decisions. Now he's giving you double because you're not robbing him. It was a shame that you would live your whole life on earth. You get income tax and you think about your children faster than the Lord Jesus. Before you had children, it was the Lord Jesus that kept you. It was the Lord Jesus that gave you some thing thing so that you could even get a child. And now you're going to take the money that you think your child is produced. You think that is the amount of children that got you that money on your income tax. You don't understand that it's the Lord Jesus, his mercy, his favor. You done planned out how you're going to spend the money. And imagine sometimes you say that you love God and all your life. That's what you did. Think about it.
There's many people that say that they love God in all their life. Your decisions was all about you and yours. Oh, my children. Oh, my man. Oh, I got to get my new apartment. Oh, I got to get my new house. Oh, it's me. It's me. It's me. You never thought, hey, maybe I got $8,000. Maybe I'm supposed to sow $8,000. Some of y'all used to go to church with your income tax money up there sowing $50. No good and well, you just got a big old bag from God. What I'm saying is the soul, it has to stop deceiving before it can start receiving the hundredfold. The soul got to stop receiving. You know how many men, they think that God is bringing stuff to their life and their soul ain't even right with God. They don't even have a sowing account. Let me tell you something. I will be very scary as a man to think that God is giving me pleasure if I don't even got seeds to match the pleasure that I'm asking God for. I will be very shocked. If, if somebody texts me and said, baby, I love you so much. I say, baby, you can't love me. You're going to have to go on about your business right now because my sewing account is not right with God. And I don't think that God is sending me no sexiness into my life right now. Baby, you're going to have to go on about yourself. I don't want to talk to you. Just delete my number. Don't call me. Don't come over. I don't want to see you. I don't want to date with you. I don't want to eat no food. Don't say nothing. Don't bring no meals. No, none of that. Don't don't bring me no pictures. Don't do none of that. I don't want to see no titties, no breasts, no, no thighs and no cute eyes none of that just leave that stuff to yourself because my sewing account ain't right i can't trust anything that comes my life that my sewing is not attracting it if my seed is not the magnet for what i'm experiencing i don't want it because it is a curse in disguise god can't bless me if i refuse to bless him i only reap what i sow and the level in which i sow is the level that i reap king jesus says some 30 some 60 some 100 fold if I am not giving to God. I can't trust that God is giving you to me. I don't want no harvest just because it's a harvest. I want a divine harvest. See, you got to catch this, that even when Satan comes into your life, it's still a harvest. Sometimes Satan comes into your life as a harvest because of your seeds of distraction. Your seeds of dishonor will attract dishonorable company. Your seed of rebellion will attract rebellious people. Your, your seed of deceiving yourself will attract a harvest of deceivers. You wonder why when you're rebellious to God, you connect with certain people. You attracted them in your rebellion. And that's why God tells you to disconnect from people because you only attracted them in the state of darkness. They are a harvest for the darkness that you've been walking in. They are a harvest for the blindness, for the prayerlessness, for the life of no fasting, for the life of no thanking God. You attracted certain people from your flesh. The only reason why they came into your life because you had an atmosphere of the serpent. See, you attract serpents. Think about it, people of God. When you do stuff that God don't want you to do and you connect with people after you do it, remember that they are a serpent just like you. They are the devil just like you because you in your devil state is the one that connected with them. They connected with you because both of y'all are the same spirit. Ahab connected. With Jezebel connected with all the different re revelations of how to hate prophets, how to hate the prophet, how to hate Elijah. The prophets of Baal was all on one accord. They all wanted to overthrow Elijah. What you think is going on here? All of them are attracting each other because that's the mentality that they have. They hate God. They hate the prophet. They hate the mindset of the work of God going forth. That's the mindset. Why do you think that Herod and those kings disconnected? God told those kings, after you give this seed to Jesus, don't go back to Herod again. Why do you think that God disconnects them? Because they used to have that same mindset as Herod, but now they're being delivered. Why do you think when the children of Israel, they cry out and moan for God, that God sets them free from Pharaoh? 
because they had the mind of Pharaoh. When they started crying out for God, they're telling God, we want another mind. So God said, I'm going to send you somebody that has the other mind that you're looking for. I'm going to send you Moses because Moses is the one that's carrying the mind that you're asking me to give you. Moses is carrying the knowledge that you're seeking to know. Moses is carrying the lifestyle that you want to live. Moses is carrying the behavior that you want to change yourself into. Moses is carrying the words that you need to learn. Moses is carrying the prophecy that you need to receive. Moses is carrying the teachings that will change your being from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Moses is the one that's going to anoint you. He's going to bless you and bring you out. He's going to bring you into a wealthy place. It's Moses carrying the lifestyle that you've been begging me for. You attract certain people in the state you in. You look back who your baby mama is, who your baby daddy is. Why did you have sex with him? Because that's what, where you was. That, that was where you was. A lot of times, that's why God start deleting people from your life, because you, you got connected to them in the wrong place anyway. If, if I'm in a place where God not satisfied with my life, why would I trust who I connect with while God not satisfied with my life? Duh. Duh. I'm going to trust people that I connect with when God is not even pleased with my decisions. And children of God, you got to be smarter because what you have to start thinking about is this. If I'm connecting with certain people and I'm connecting to them in the place where I'm still trying to find the will of God. I cannot trust that these are long term connections. I can't trust it. Daughter, pit in your mind that you don't want any pleasure that you didn't so far. Pit in your mind, son, that you don't want any satisfaction that you didn't so far. If you're not sowing for it, don't think that God is sending it to you because it's a trap. It's a trap. It is a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. Is a trap. If I am not honoring God, I can't trust that whatever is coming to me is honorable. I can't trust it. Saints, I'm giving you a secret today on this line that will break open everything for you so that you can receive the wealth and the riches of God. And then here's what happens. Also, when you become a sower and you're around a non-sower, telepathically, you're telling God, that you're, you can walk with somebody that does not agree with what God told you is the only way. So that speaks a lot to God, too. It tells God a lot. OK, you feel comfortable around somebody that does not even agree with what I told you that I need. All right. So you OK being around someone that's not a God pleaser. All right. I understand. All right. I got you. I got you, baby. Yeah, all right. I feel you. I, no, I feel you. I feel you. That's how you feel. You good with that. You good. You somebody that I'm giving an opportunity to and you, you over there hanging with somebody. You ain't even got to hang with them. You ain't even got to hang with them, but you over there hanging with somebody that I ain't giving no opportunities to. I got you. I hear you. I hear what you're saying. I understand exactly what you're saying. See, so, some of you all got to catch what I'm saying. I'm not telling you to leave your workplace. You got to go to your workplace. I'm talking about how you seek out people that have a completely different atmosphere that God wants to prosper. I'm talking about people that you don't have to meet, you don't have to talk, you don't have to connect. You can just go on about your jolly way, but you find a way to connect with them or stay connected to them. I'm talking about that. The seed separates you from people that God did not want in your life. And some of you all have not sown enough to know who God disconnecting you from. 
Your seed will disconnect you from people that's not supposed to be in your life. That's how powerful sowing is. Some of you all have never experienced. When you go to the depth of sowing, God start dealing with your company. He start cutting people off, even if he got to kill them. The seed brings judgment concerning your atmosphere, your environment, your associations. That's why some of you all, you didn't break away from people until you started sowing strong into me. You couldn't do it because the seed is carrying that extra anointing that you need to walk away from what is toxic, from what is dangerous, from what is demonic. It was until you started sowing that God says, don't talk to this person no more. That God says, I don't want you to be around the company of this one no more. Because the seed is the breaking of Satan's arms that hug you. Some of you are getting hugged by satanic arms. You hanging around satanic Hamans. And the seed can't break you away until you cherish it enough to sow it. You want to know why I live a sanctified life? Because I'm a seed sower. The more you sow, the more you become God in the flesh. The more you sow seed, the more obedient and submissive and fearful of God you become. The more you sow, the more you start realizing how you have wasted your life and wasted your time on people and things that was not even beneficial to you. It damaged you. It destroyed you. It made you worse than what you were supposed to become. It lessened your value. The seed will start showing you. Somebody call you on the phone. Dog on it. I'm not just not going to answer my phone. I need to change my phone number. Dag on it. See, you can't even do that. Some of you all got the same phone number for seven years and talking about you a changed woman. You a changed man. Use a liar. Use a big liar. Use a big lie. You got the portal open to every snake and every demon that could talk to you seven years ago. You is a big liar. But you're going to stay in your predicament until you make the changes that God needs from you. See, you're not hurting God. You're hurting yourself because God will not trust anybody that got ties to their past. Yeah, you don't want you don't like me now. You don't like me now, but you're going to stay right there. You're going to stay right there. And if you OK with being stuck, stuck it out, baby. Stuck it out. I don't even got my same number from seven years ago. When you a sower, somebody will call you, somebody will text you and you say, how the hell this gate open to this person? Block. I need to stop my same number. I need to get this number out of here. The fact that a snake can still talk to me, that means that I'm in proximity for the snake to access me. If that don't concern me, there's something terribly wrong. If the devil can access me at his will and I'm not troubled by that, there's something wrong. If the devil could talk to me when he's ready and I'm at peace with that. Oh, oh, son, who bewitched me? Who bewitched me? If the devil can spew his venom into my atmosphere, into my territory at his own will. See, sometimes it's good for Satan to attack you because Satan actually reveals to you how open you are up to his kingdom. Satan will expose to you how open you are to his portals. That's why God don't need to destroy Satan. Because Satan actually exposes to you as a child of God. How free am I? How accessible is the devil? The thing about it, you know why? You know why people that divinely get together? Do you know why they don't last? Because somebody is still accessible to past things. Somebody's still accessible. There are women and men, y'all get married, right? You, or, or, or you may know of people that get married, right? Why the hell are you still hanging out with your BFF? You's married. Oh, I'm gonna go hang out with my girlfriend. Baby, you did that when you were single. What the hell you go, she ain't got no man. Why the hell y'all going out together? Y'all telepathically now on the same call. You got a man that you supposed to be pleasing. She ain't got one. Vice versa. How you's a man, you go out with a single man, you hanging out, y'all chilling. He got the mindset, he looking at everybody. Everything that's moving, everything swinging. 
and he's sitting right there. You telepathically linking up with his mind. He don't got no woman. So when you sitting right there, you was a married man, you up there, you were a single man right there. The single man got a different vocabulary. He got a different mentality. He got a different goal. He looking for somebody that he could, he could, he could enjoy. <laughs> you already got something. He looking for something that he could, he could, he could hit without going to jail. No domestic abuse. And you already got what he looking for. But I'm saying how people are not really all that smart. Why would you stay connected to people that were in a place that was opposite to where you are now with God? Yes, you can outgrow people because once you have grown into the will of God and they haven't, that means that mean you can't hang. Why would I still be connected to you if you was with me when I was depressed? Blessed be God, if you was with me when I was depressed and you still depressed and now I got joy, why I'm going to stay connected to you? Because me and you going to keep on telepathically going in opposite directions or else I'm going to be conformed to you. You telling me all the stuff that make you want to commit suicide. Now I want to commit suicide. I don't know why I'm, I'm waking up 3 a.m. and I'm thinking about killing myself. What if I just cut my neck? What if I slip my wrist? And you don't know that the thoughts are coming because you got an open portal to somebody that is living in a place that you used to be. And they don't want to come out even though you came out. If you don't want to move when I move just like that, then I need to move when you haven't moved just like that. Somebody ain't hearing me on here. If you don't want to move when I move just like that, then I need to move away when you refuse to move just like that. How come I got free and you stay bound and you think that me and you can stay friends? You see my freedom and you choose to stay bound. You telling me enough for me to move on. Think about that. How many times are you growing and someone else is not growing and they expect you to stay connected to them? If my growth does not move you, that means that I'm not powerful enough in your life anyway. So bye bye. If my dedication to Jesus does not convict you to dedicate yourself to Jesus, I don't need to convince you of nothing else. If my life can't speak to you that there's another realm, then stay in the realm that you at. But me and you ain't going to be talking because I don't want to go down there and you don't want to come up here. So bye bye. These are things that people don't think about. But this is all protection of the wealth atmosphere. If you want the wealth atmosphere to manifest in your life, how God going to make you wealthy when you got people around him? They're disturbing spirits to God. They disturb God. He don't want to look at their life. But when they get around you because the eyes of the Lord is on you and he favors you. Now he got to look at them because of you. He don't want to hear them on the phone, but because you on the phone with them, he got to hear them. He don't want you sitting down in a restaurant with them, but because you sitting down in a restaurant with them, he got to look at them. There are people that you're bringing into your space with God that God don't want to see them that every time he looking at you. Now he got to look at them and they disturbing him. Do you really think that God going to let you take withdrawals from his bank account? There are things that sometimes you don't think about and the enemy hide it from you for a reason. But if you're going to manifest the wealth of God, you got to be willing for him to set you free. Some people talking about, oh, I done, I done got changed. You ain't get changed, baby. You's a liar. You still open to the devil. You not changed. When you get changed, you shut all satanic doors. When you get changed, then you realize I'm not going to let nobody talk to me. That's adversarial to the place that I'm going with God, the place that I'm in with God, what God has taught me. The fact that you still got open doors is proof that you're not really changed. And see, that's why people don't realize that they're going to fall away from God soon because they look at their self and they think that they're so strong and they think that they're so learned and they think that they're trained. But they don't realize how come I got all these satanic gates open for demons to talk to me at any given moment and I don't even feel moved to change it. That's proof that something is terribly wrong, that at any given moment, Satan can come and take me out of my place because I have left the door open. You notice that King Jesus tells Peter that, the desi that Satan desires to sift you like wheat. 
But watch this. Peter was working with Satan's desires. You're not hearing me. Because Peter still had his mind open to idle thoughts. He told Jesus, you ain't got to go to the cross. Where does that come from? Prayerlessness. And that's why when King Jesus tells him, watch and pray, he doesn't even do it. He goes to sleep. That was his dumb self. That wasn't the right Peter. That was the stupid Peter. But here's the crazy thing. Some of y'all still going to sleep. You up there worshiping God, singing a song, you done fell right to sleep. That's your dumb self. That's your dumb self. You, you better finish that song, baby. <laughs> you better finish me. his eye on the sparrow. And I know. Finish it. He watches over me. Finish it. Finish it. Finish it. Finish it. Do it. Do whatever you got to do. Finish that song, baby. Finish the whole song. Get the song out. Don't finish his eye. <laughs> Nah, don't, don't, don't get, don't do that. Don't wake up, wake up, wake up, finish it. Cause when you were smoking weed, you finished that weed that you were smoking. You ain't had to, you ain't had to worry about none of that. You finished that sex that you was having. You finished that beer you was drinking. You finished that cussing out that you was cussing out. You finished that argument, that altercation. Finish it, finish, finish, finish spiritual things. Finish spiritual thing. You finished that attack that you was having on somebody. You finished it. So finish spiritual things. Don't tell me that you only good to finish Satan's assignment. When people are ready to fight, they find a way to fight. When people are ready to destroy each other, they find a way to destroy each other. Well, finish what is good, what is lovely, what is pure, what is virtuous and of a good report. Finish righteous things. Don't just be finishing evil stuff. There's some people when Satan called them, they get the job done real quick. When God called them, oh, I'm praying about it. I'm hoping that God give me grace. God, God, give me strength. Oh, baby, you, you, you got to check your DNA. You got to check your daddy. You got to check who, who you belong to. Is it bald head Satan Lucy, uh, Lucy Biden? Or is it, is it the Lord Jesus Christ? Who's your daddy? You will have to find out who your father is in the spirit. Because King Jesus said, my sheep, they hear my voice. God going to check up on you when it's time for money coming. He's going to check up on you real strong. And see, God don't give his money to people that he can't investigate. Just remember what I'm telling you. God don't give his money to people he can't investigate. If he can't investigate you, you're going to stay right there thinking that God going to give you something. And that's going to be your testimony that I live my whole life expecting God to do something. And I never did what God expected me to do. See, saints, while you expecting God to do stuff for you, remember that he's expecting certain stuff for you to do for him. And while you think that God, hopefully he know that I want him to give me a cruise. Hopefully he know that I want him to give me a big house. Hopefully he know I, 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 I want you to always remember, hopefully God, God is hopefully hoping that you will realize that there's certain things that he wants you to do. And see, certain stuff God shouldn't have to instruct you. See, when you a real one and you a friend of God, God don't have to tell you change your number. God ain't got to tell you shut your doors. God ain't got to tell you be careful of this one. Be careful of that one. You are already doing it because you're a friend of God. See, people got to be told to do stuff because it's not in them. If God got to tell you to pray, it's because you ain't got prayer in you. Think about that. God was telling Peter to watch and pray because he, he didn't have in him to watch and pray. His desire was to go to sleep. His desire was to comfort his flesh. When God has to tell you to do something, it's not in you. If God got to tell you to sow a seed, why do you think that I don't tell JHM to sow no seed no more? I bet when you stand before God, God going to deal with you. I bet when you stand before the great God Jehovah, I bet he going to have something to say about it. I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to say one thing. Come on. I, I done retired from that. You ever understood why I don't ask for no seed and every man of God asks for seed? God done retired. I done retired from that. We in another glory. We in another glory. If you got to be told to sow, that means that it's not in you to sow. So therefore, 
What's in you going to come out of you. The days of faking is no longer relevant. It's not time for that. It is the day of the Lord. I retired from that long time ago. Because the spirit now is going to reveal to you who you are, whether you're a wheat or whether you're a tear. That's what the spirit, the spirit going to do that. But see, count it all joy because know that this ministry is at a higher plane. This ministry is at a higher glory. Count it all joy. And I want to say this. I really do love you. That's why I talk to you the way I do. You'll have people in your life that are in your life for 50 years, 40 years, 30 years, and they'll never tell you these things because this is what only what love does. Love protects and love tells you what could make your prosperity manifest. That's what love does. Love will actually give you a hard truth so that you can have an easy life. Oh, I love that. Somebody going to have to write that down. Somebody going to have to write that down. Somebody going to have to write that down. I watch Hansley. Hansley. Hansley is a is a well seasoned man. He's a real man. And Hansley, Hansley gets down. He doesn't worry about his ligaments. He doesn't worry about his health. He doesn't worry about anything. And he bypasses the natural realm to lay at my feet and sow a seed as his apostle. He does not care about his bones, his fragments, none of that. And he's a real man. Why you think who the men that I have around me? Why you think I have them around me? Because they so childlike. Juan is so childlike, so childlike, so childlike. Elijah, uh, Joshua. I love Ramirez. Ramirez. I've never had to tell Ramirez to do anything twice. They so childlike and they've been with me for years and they never disrespected me with their mouth. Not one time. Hainsley has never disrespected me with his mouth. Juan has never cussed me out one time. Juan has never disrespected me one time. They have never they have never contradicted my instruction one time. And thank God I'm a straight man because I ain't going to give no crazy instructions. <laughs> I'm not going to give no crazy instructions, baby. I don't praise his holy name. They never glory to be unto God. Glory to be unto God. <laughs> glory to be unto God. Glory to be. Thank God I'm straight from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I love, I love the opposite. <laughs> oh my gosh, glory to his name. Glory be unto God. Glory be unto God. Glory be unto God. I, I just I, I want to say this too. Um the Lord really loves women so much that if you look in every generation, God will always gather his woman and make sure that they're fed the word. Make sure that they hear things that anoints them. Make sure they know things that take them to the next level of virtue. The Lord Jesus, he's so patient with women because he know that that spirit is stupid. He, <laughs> he know that Eve, Steve want to cleave so that you don't receive. He know, he know. And, and, and he's so in love with his woman. He's in love with the man that's after his heart. He loves them. And he will do anything to discover you wherever you are. Even when you hide yourself away, he'll run after you. And all you want to start living a life where you exemplify that same mentality back unto him. For the rest of your days on earth, just rest in the Lord and have this mentality. Say, Lord, I just want to 
express my love towards you in all my ways. And I received the anointing, the great grace to do that, to show my appreciation to you. Saints, when Rahab hid Joshua's men and she lied to that king according to the natural and told him, no, that was truth. You know why? Because Jesus was in that. Joshua's name is, it means Yeshua. So she told Satan, a satanic king, the wrong information. So Yeshua can be protected in her house. So that Yeshua can have his way in her house. What you want to catch is that Rahab, she had loved Yeshua so much that she was willing to risk her life just to protect his plan in her environment. See, you're going to have to take on that same mentality if you want to be close to God. Now, saints, I don't know about you, but making it to heaven and you still be in the back of the bus. <laughs> yeah, you escape hell, but baby, that's not the move. That's not the move at all. Somebody put balls on the screen. Somebody put balls on the screen. Oh, that's, I'll see about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's about nine balls. That's about right. Now, let me say something here. <laughs> that's, just, that's just a little joke. That's a little joke. That's just a little joke. I just, I just break the atmosphere because I know some of y'all tight. I know some of y'all tight. I just broke the atmosphere. That's all. Wait, that didn't sound too right. Some of y'all tight. I know some of y'all might be intense because of <laughs> that is not too right. I know some of y'all may be a little intense because of what I'm talking about. So I just broke the atmosphere with joy. See, I cut you and then I heal you at the same. <laughs> I cut you and I heal you at the same time. There's Doctor Jesus working. Hallelujah. But just be ready to always show your love back to God. Your passion for how he has treated you. Be always ready. Always ready. See, even when God rebukes you, he's not rebuking you because he's actually finished with you. He's rebuking you because he's saying we're supposed to continue. So let's break off what's going to stop that. Wow. Saints, you got to catch this. This is amazing. See, the devil will tell you by the side that God is rebuking you because he's he's finished with you. No, he's re he's correcting you because he's saying I need to protect this relationship, this intimacy, this oneness. It shouldn't be broken by nothing. So let's get this in the butt. Let's nip. Wait, that ain't sound too right. Let's nip it in the butt. And saints, God, oh yes, Lord, God is actually often trying to counsel the relationship he has with you so that it can work. Think about it. Isaiah, the prophet said that the Lord Jesus is a wonderful counselor. What you want to catch is that Isaiah was saying that he is a one counseling you and, 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 and he's counseling you with the marriage you have with him. He's counseling you with the prophetic anointing that you have. He's counseling you with the teachings that he's given to you so that you can keep it in front of you. See, when I got the realization that my seed was actually telling the Lord. I really trust. Everything that you have told me about. Your promise, your word. When I realized that the seed. Was me telling my father in heaven. That I actually believe every single thing that comes out of your mouth. I begin to carry harvest. Your harvest is 
in the pouch of your seed. Your seed is carrying everything that you want to happen from God. And see, what I'm telling you is that you want to so strong enough to realize that maybe something that I actually have wanted to happen is actually dangerous if it does happen. Sometimes people say, oh, I wish I just get my child back. I wish I could get my child back out of the foster care and foster care. And then you get the child back. The child say, I'm going to kill you. You're like, what? the? You about to kill me? I'm about to drop kick you. No, I'm about to kill you. All right. You about to kill me. I need to call 911. Where the phone at? 119-191. Come on. Come on. Come on. Somebody answer. Somebody answer. Uh, yes. Yes, ma'am. I, I need to, I need you to send about five, five, five. Uh, I need to five racist cops. I need five racist cops to come to my address. You're going to have to strangle this one because this this is a big old monster. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all could do all that. You could you can knee him and all of that. You can back him. You can beat him in the spine. <laughs> you can paralyze him if you want. You can tranquilize him. If you got a taser, get about two tasers because the one taser might not work. The battery might be dead. Yeah, he got more energy than you know. Yeah, I need about five of y'all out here. Yeah, all right. Yeah, call him. All right, all right. See y'all. I see y'all. But come quick now. Come quick now, because I don't know what he doing. I don't know. I hear some, I had, I had a chainsaw in the back. Yeah, I hear a chainsaw. Yeah, there's a chainsaw in the back. Hold on, hold on. Come, come, hey, come, hey, get back, get back, get back, get back. Get back, get, get back, get back. I'm going to call your daddy. Oh, forgot. Oh, shoot. I, I done forgot who your daddy was. I don't even know which daddy it is. I don't know who to call. I got about nine numbers right here. I'm going to call each one of them to find out. <laughs> I forgot how they look. I need them to send me a picture. Send me a face picture so I can, I can compare. Compare and contrast. Your seed is carrying all the events that you want to happen. So always, always be thoughtful when you sow a seed. And don't forget what you sow. Do not forget what you sow. There's another spirit that makes you forget seeds so that it can become unimportant to you so that you won't see the effectiveness of it. Whatever you forget loses its effectiveness. Always remember that. If you forget something, it loses its effectiveness. Whatever you forget loses its effectiveness. If you're taking notes, write that down. Whatever you forget loses its power. Saints, there is an anointing where God causes you to forget your foolishness, forget your distractions, forget your errors, your mistakes, because whatever you forget loses its power. If you want to track back, why do people keep doing the same wrong thing? Because they haven't forgotten the wrong thing that they did originally. So there is an anointing for forgetfulness. Forgetfulness. 